Well, I remember when I was called by the TEDx team that I was going to be speaking here today. I was really excited. It was the highlight of my year. Um, so to begin my preparation, I went to YouTube and I started watching all the inspirational TEDx speakers. <laughs> and TED is not new to me. It was introduced to me by my late friend, Najib, who would have been very proud to see me here on this stage today. Well, at the end of the day, I came to a realization that what actually makes a very good TED Talk are people sharing their genuine stories. And in their stories, they share ideas. And their ideas inspire people. And that is what I hope to achieve on this stage here today. Well, my story of entrepreneurship started when I was 16 years old. I didn't even know it was called entrepreneurship at the time. <laughs> so when I went to my foundation level in Dubai, I would always buy textiles and bring back home and start selling to my dad and my brother-in-laws and <laughs> I started making money from that. Then I moved on to transportation business, which I actually failed at miserably because I was not in the country to run it myself. Well, together with a friend of mine, we knew that we were entrepreneurial minded and the whole nine to five was not for us. So we started looking at industries and sectors we could venture into when we return back home. And it was almost by accident we stumbled upon, upon Anna Daria Farms by Usman Antata. He was just setting up his poultry farm at the time. And we took up interest in agriculture. So we started calling back home, how is agriculture being done in Nigeria? How is poultry farming? And we were at the right place at the right time because the current government just came into power and they were ready to diversify the Nigerian economy into a non-oil sector. And agriculture was the main priority. So upon coming back home, I was really excited to start telling people that I was close to that I'm going to venture into farming. <laughs> I was really excited. And when I told them, they would be like, agriculture. <laughs> what do you know about agriculture? <laughs> You are just coming back from Dubai and you want to go and start agriculture as young as you are. I was 20 years old at the time. They told me that people would cheat you out of it. I remember vividly one person told me, Haruna, you are leaving Abuja to go to Yawuri in Kebi to start living your life. You become a village champion. <laughs> well, just like that, I started thinking to myself, Kai, these people are telling the truth. What do I know about agriculture? I've, the only time I've seen farms is when we're traveling across Nigeria. And I started, all the outside voices started getting into my head and just like that, I'd given up. I remember I told my mother that, Mama, I don't want to do this agriculture again. I'll go back and do my master's in September. And she looked at me and she said, this agriculture that you have been talking, you've been talking about for months on end, you want to give up? See, let me tell you something. You're only 20 years old. If you fail, you can start from a place of experience. And if, and if you succeed at this, then good for you. So knowing that I had my mother's blessing was enough motivation that I needed. So I packed my things and I moved to Yawuri and we encountered our first challenge on the farm because we wanted to cultivate maize to feed our chickens. So I was told that we cannot farm maize here. I said, what's the reason? My farm manager at the time told me that there are monkeys living around this area because <laughs> they, are, they are more likely to eat up your, your maize before you could harvest. I said, ha -ha. <laughs> so what do we do now? Knowing that I had no experience in agriculture made me to humble myself, to learn on the job. Every single day I was on the farm from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. I would eat together with the workers and I told him that, how do we cultivate soybeans? And he told me, 
we could so cultivate soybeans to actually sell at the end of the season because it has a greater market value than we can use. We can sell it later and then buy maize for the, for the poultry. I said, okay, no problem, let's do that. And I needed the best amount of people that would actually, I needed the best amount of people to come and cultivate the soybeans. And he told me to my surprise that there are women in the community that they do the best job. I was amazed. They came and their level of coordination and perfection was out of this world. At the end of the three days that we worked with them, we paid them and I was on the farm and I could see how much it meant to them. I knew that some of them will go on to fund their own farms. I know that some of them will go on to support their children. And that was the moment I knew that I was onto something that was much greater than myself. <laughs> now, four years later, we still work with those women and they have never disappointed us. <laughs> um, now, moving to harvest, we wanted to incorporate the older Almagiri students into agriculture. So I told my farm manager, let's go and have an agreement with their teacher. We're going to pay them and then pay for their, we're going to give them breakfast and lunch and transport them from their schools to the farm. And then we worked with them for a period of two weeks and they're really hard working. So at the end of that two weeks, I remember they came to me and they said, do you have any other work for us? And I said to them, no, I'm also going back to Abuja tomorrow. And I could see how heartbroken those children were. They youths just like me and they were willing to work. So which brings me to my next point. In Nigeria, we have a current population of 201 million Nigerians and the numbers are growing. And by the year 2050, we're more likely to double that number to about 400 million. And the current generation, I mean, if you look at it now, it's always the older generation that are involved in agriculture. And there is a need for youth to venture into agriculture for the sustainability of our future. Because if we don't, we're more likely to suffer these consequences. Which brought me to my next idea. I was like, okay, since these youths are willing and we have a few hectares to spare, I am going to fund them with free land, free seeds, free fertilizer, and free herbicide. And we worked alongside with them for four months, and at the end of that four months, the results were, we got were amazing. So I remember after harvest, one of them came to me and he told me that, I am going back home to get married. And another one of them came, me to, came to me and told me that I need your phone number and your Instagram handle. I was wondering, my Instagram handle, he told me, yes, I bought a smartphone. It was a Samsung. <laughs> and then that was when I, it also made me realize that these are youths just like me, interested in the same things. And that's forward to this year. Before I could move back to my farm, this same set of youths, they've already gone to back to the farm, done their land clearing, land preparation, and they're about cultivating. This only showed me that these are youths that have the drive and the determination to take small-scale agriculture to a commercial level. Now, on the other hand, we have other youths that have been reaching out to me on my social media page. A lot of youths are, in, are interested in agriculture, possibly from seeing what I do, or from seeing what I have been able to achieve. And ever since, we've given out more than 1,000 free consultancy and which inspired us to start up a platform called Her Fast Post, which is a podcast that actually hosts entrepreneurs from different sectors in Nigeria to come and share their success stories, their struggle, and how they were able to overcome them. Now, on the other hand, again, we had a set of people that wanted to invest into my farm because they've seen the work that we have done, which brought us to start up a Sharia-compliant agricultural investment here in Kevin State. We are just running the, the, the first stage now, is at the pilot stage. 
Now, my journey throughout agriculture have not been rosy. There's so many times that I wanted to give up. And if I would have told you the story, it would have made perfect sense to you to why I would have closed shop and be done with it. Like the time that my 30 hectare rice farm was raided by a neighboring village, or the time that we actually cultivated on the 23 hectares and the seeds refused to germinate, or the countless times that my car have broken down between Kebi to Yaori on the dead nights of the <laughs> um, Well, the story is, has not always been gloomy because now we've been able to move from our 23 hectare farm to a 450 hectare farm. We have been recognized by international and national um, organization on our on Trailblazer Awards on Sustainable Agriculture. We have been published both nationally and internationally on, on newspapers and magazines. And now we're on TEDx. <laughs> <laughs> now, our, our motto in Hafaz has always been improving lives, improving agriculture, which is the reason why we're giving back to our community this September by sending 1,500 kids back to school. <clears throat> now, before I leave, I would like to tell you that no matter how young or old you think you are, it is never too late to start living a life of purpose. Because you will never know the amount of lives that you will be able to touch along the way. Because if you do listen to the outside voices, they will bring you down, and only you know your own true potential. If I would have listened to those voices, I would not have been standing here today. So I would like to tell you that you never know the little act of courage you take into pursuing your passion. Because it's passion that will get you going when the days get very hard. You will never know the lives that you'll be able to impact or the people you'll be able to inspire. Thank you very much.